Nigeria is facing a lot. And the at the age of that you mentioned now, there will be the one to be even suffer it more. Because when I'm not okay, I can't remember my daddy at all. We pray for our leader to do better more than this. At 64, Nigeria is just like a baby at four. I don't know. I don't know what to say, but it's a shame to us that at 64 years we are still in this level. It's a shame. on Union Television. I'm your regular host, Ozi Ifibi. Today we'll be looking at Nigeria at 64. Nigeria is a great country, a country rich in culture, natural resources, and a vast yielding land. Nigeria, we hail thee. There are lots of expectations from Nigeria as a nation, especially now at 64. <laughs> wow, it's quite uh, funny. A 64 years person, my expectations. You expect something great from him or her. And as a human being, when you are 64, at least you're able to balance and okay and be comfortable as a 64 years old person in life. At least you're able to achieve your set goal in life. I would expect such person to have achieved a lot and fulfill purpose in life, you know. At that age, I expect somebody to have, that person to have do made a lot of efforts in life, you know, succeed and have impact in his own life and his, even his environment as well. So, it's a lot of expectations. My expectation for, from a 64-year-old person is enormous because at 64, you are already a very old person. And when somebody is at 64, 64 is not the time that somebody starts looking for a job. You are aiming for your re uh, pension, for your retirement age. So at 64, that person would have achieved a lot. At 64, Nigeria is just like a baby at four. Expectations from a 64-year-old person, uh, at least at that very stage of anybody's life, uh, must have gone through a lot. And of course, that, that is actually very close to, very, getting very close to the end of his life. A lot of things are expected because as a 64 years old person, you're elderly, you've seen beyond we the upcoming ones. So as a 64 year old person, a lot of things that is at stake. One, in short, like we upcoming people, there are some things we are expecting from you. As an elderly person, you are supposed to guide us. Expectation from a 64 year old person that has seen everything. That only few many few years that remain to make it 70 years. That person must have put something on ground that he has benefited, and also put on ground what the children, even the children, children can also benefit at that age of 64. It's glad you had this kind of question. I, as I broadcaster as well, because I present a program called Labeofi. Uh, we expect. Somebody of age of 64 years, Abby, is that not your question? To be matured in everything. And we, if a nation is up to 64 years, it should not be a nation to be crawling by now. But uh, it's unfortunate. The other side is the story. A 64 year person should be, by the special grace of God, be able to know the way forward. That person must have made all the mistakes they needed to make. And this is a time for them to start manifesting eldership. At 64, there are some certain things you should be able to provide for your children, for your generations that are coming. And I think, like, providing the basic things. Bad expectation. Bad expectation. Because imagine of a person of 60-something years old. He has worked. He's supposed to be retired. Being at home eating, Abby? <laughs> but now, with the way of things is now, even if they are collecting the pension, how can they survive with the pension? The pensioners, how can they survive? That's the pensioners. Those that are not even earning pension that work with private sectors. 
Hmm? I pity them more. Because they depend on their children. You understand? They depend on self-business people who are to that up to age now. Their children is what they depend on. What well, now the life is very difficult for every individual in Nigeria to live. A little of foreigner is about uh, 1,200 plus for black market. At least NNPC is selling 880 something naira. Something we can afford, we will buy about a rate of uh, uh, 350. 300 naira before. So if you're not buying that thing at rate of uh, 8 something from the same NNPC, and you are still earning the same amount you are earning at the same rate, uh, you, are this, you are still earning the same amount you are earning before. So it's, it can be balanced. So Nigeria is facing a lot. And the, at the age of that you mentioned now, there will be the one to be even suffer it more. Because when I'm not okay, I can't remember my daddy at all. He said, oh no, when I'm okay, I remember to give them. So I think the government should do something meaningful. Well, my expectations is that um, at 64, the person must have um, achieved, uh, at least to some extent, he must have achieved what should take care of him for the rest of his life. As an uh, old man, um, a 64 years old, we expect uh, to be doing better. For a 64 year old person, <laughs> uh, well, I expect um, a 64 year old person to have a lot of experience. I mean, he must have learned a lot um, from his younger age um, and, of course, um, take innovative decisions and more decisive decisions from experience. You know, you say you learn by experience. So, um, a four year old person is supposed to be experienced and supposed to learn from his mistakes and the mistake of others. So make better decisions and plan for his future. Expectations are good because they keep hopes alive. Many Nigerians are disappointed at the pace at which Nigeria is moving right now. As a result, they are tired of hoping in Nigeria. I swear to God, I'm not expecting anything good from this country because the government are not helping. You get, uh, if I have my way, I'll leave this country because nothing for me here. Nothing, nothing. If I, if I have my way, I will come out. I don't tire for this place. You understand? <laughs> there are so many expectations from me, but it's unfortunate. I could remember when we are, when I'm in primary school then in the 80s, there is one thing we did in Nigeria, which is Lagos State here. We, we went to Tafawa Balewa Square to go and celebrate the Independent Day. But it's unfortunate now, there is nothing like that. Even Nigeria of nowadays, it is hardly for someone to get something easily. Let me give you an example. In terms of food, shelter, even in this Lagos state, the way I'm seeing it, we people that we are living in Lagos State, we even buy a car instead of renting in an apartment. Are you getting me? We'll be living inside that car. We know that car we we do so many things for us. Maybe when you are going to your working place or you are going to somewhere. This is where this country is getting us to now. So that is what I will tell you about. Because I don't expect anything from this government. As a citizen of Nigeria, I must expect so much things. Um, being 64 years old, we should be mature. We should know where we are coming from and where we are going. Another thing is that um, with our backlog of years, should give us an exposition of how we should gather ourselves together to, 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 to enjoy the prospect of the new year. You know I mean? So we are not supposed to be doing the whole thing and expect you know I mean? a new, another result. Because we are doing the whole thing. Do a new thing so that at least you can enjoy you know I mean? a new dispensation. That's what I can say about that. At 62, we're still crawling. Like I tell people, these are our generations. We've suffered a lot. Because going by what Nigeria has done to us, because we're not 62 yet, our parents are 62. We're supposed to be enjoying what 62-year-old Nigeria has done for us now. But now, as it is, we're suffering. Nigeria is suffering. All Nigerians, we know as it is now, things are not okay. And we're, we're, we're actually looking forward to uh, the president doing the needful, like doing things that can favor the 
the generation that Cafe was as a youth, you know, by providing jobs, you know, basic things like simple things like uh, electricity, you know, bringing down petrol prices, just petrol price. I'm telling you at, at uh, age 62, presidential address, just tell us um, petrol is now 500 naira, dollar is now 1,000 uh, naira. I'm telling you the whole country will jubilate and that will be a perfect celebration, a perfect gift for us at 62. Nigeria is going to be 64, you know, maybe October 1. And uh, we need a radical change in this you know, country. Number one, we need a constitutional government where democracy you know, enthrones, where the democracy is seen even in the rural areas, and where also we have uh, the traitor governments working and not a situation where they say they seize the, the local government money. And also we need a situation where innocent souls will rule Nigeria, people who are totally knowledgeable, not people that are recycled into the system. Some of them recycle their children and they keep some jobs for them. And when they come, you know, they you know, balloon the system too. We need people who are, you know, a sort of, uh, you know, let me use this word, virgin. Virgin, uh, you know, in ideas, virgin in everything, coming to, you know, administer the, you know, the activities of this country. Look at America. Look at Canada. Look at other countries. Young, young people are coming, yes. But here, do we have young people, really? We don't have, because the young people are also behaving funny. You know, they believe in corruption. You know, people are now, you know, thinking of, you know, you know cares. In those days, we think of one the grades in the school, so, you know, one from 01 to 04, from 04, 05, all that about, you know, we have the middle class, we have the low class, we have the one, and we use education, you know, to, in, you know, to augment, you know, you know, from uh, GCE, you get uh, HSC, and you get uh, to, you know, BSc and so on, and that is how your promotions come. We need a country that will come to that level. My advice to Nigeria, I pray if they, they will take it. I think Nigeria should walk deep in themselves. They should learn the truth and they should be transparent. They should work on the truth and they should be transparent. If we are transparent enough, because God has blessed Nigeria with a lot of things, but if we should use what we have, I think other countries will come to Nigeria. If you see the way people are living this country on a daily basis, because of the hardship in Nigeria, but we have what it takes to even allow other people to come in and do business here. But the look of things in Nigeria today, with a lot of things is going wrong. I pray that Nigeria should do the needful. My encourage for this country, Nigeria, they should be transparent and be truthful in whatever they are doing. I pray God Almighty told the people that is the hem of affairs in this nation. Nigeria as a country. Well, if you say Nigeria as a country, you are talking about you, you are talking about me. So, I would say um, the solution of this country starts from us individually. So, um, no matter whatever the government is doing over there, is because the people, the populace allow it. So if we can come together as common men who are being ruled by the political uh, elites, if we can have an understanding that this is what we want and not allowing religion, um, tribalism and any other factor to disunite us. So if we can come together knowing that this is the kind of Nigeria we want and we leave it morally and other aspects, I believe uh, the change will start from us. Uh, well, uh, still, you know, um, developing, you know, we've not changed. Uh, so. Um, but sadly, we're expecting things should have gone better by now. Uh, considering um, how rich Nigeria is as a country, you know, we call ourselves giant of Africa. And sadly, uh, <laughs> I don't know, um, we are doing otherwise, you know. I mean, other countries are going ahead of us, you know, in terms of economic, uh, economic resources, uh, um, natural resources, they are doing better. Um, management, corruption, you know, and all those things. So. Um, we are just hopeful, um, 64, and, you know, before now, it used to be a uh, thing of joy, you know, independence, I remember back then, you know, you shout and all of that, but now, it's like the old celebration has died down, and we are just, well, 64, public holiday, everybody stays indoor, so, that's it. What I can expect from, like, the government of today to sit up and look at 
what can they do for Nigeria to put smile on the faces of Nigeria? Because if you from now you move to one kilometer, you will not see anybody smiling because of what they are facing. The hardship is too much. So if our government can sit down and look at what to do so that Nigeria can be able to feed their family and feed themselves, and we will be better. Our expectation for Nigerians is we are expecting a very good outcome of a good nation. First of all, by now we are not supposed to be crying of oil when we have an oil producing country and the oil we are sovereign. And by now, uh, four refineries in Nigeria have been maintaining, paying a ton, and, ton around maintenance and nothing works for the past 24 years. It is a shame to this nation. And second, thirdly, economy should be not be, economy should not be in shambles like this. We expected our leaders to work on economy. And the lastly, security. Security is a thing of not to discuss about in Nigeria. As I'm talking now, we are going down to Ikeja or around Yaba. You are not sure or secure of your own life. You are not talking about the kidnap. You are talking about so-called one chance and so on and so forth. So our Nigerian government should focus on security. Then talks about foods, how they can develop agriculture. It's not to concentrate on oil, 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 and the governor running from one place to another to go and collect allocation. They are not developing. We should come together. We should stop killing ourselves. We should come together as one. There's no tribalism. I mean, like tribalism, religious leaders. We need to come together as one. There's no, okay, I'm a Christian, you're a Muslim, and at the same time, you're killing each other. And let a state be where we can intertrade, like intertrade our product. Like, for example, now people are not for farmlands. They go to Kanu. The way I read, the airmen are killing each other. Even the farmlands are not. I mean, if you go to El well oil producing, the way we are, we are just. I mean, our crude oils are not coming forth because it's not nice. We are embezzling public funds. The embezzlement and the, the corrupt leaders, we should fish them out. That's the thing. They are not developing. They are not. And what they do is scheme, palliative, giving food. Can that food be enough for somebody to eat for next three, four years? And they should develop, they should invest on infrastructure that can benefit the Nigerians, not their personal, personal pockets. And this palliative they are giving, they are giving it to them, themselves. And before you get to the public, they have rationed it to themselves. The so-called politicians have given, let's say, 90, let's say 80 percent. Don't let me exaggerate. 80 percent to their colleagues, and the 20 percent will remain to the public. And that is what we are facing in this country. It's a surprise, and it's a great loss for us to have been in this position by now at the age of 64 years. But for me, I personally, as a Nigerian, I can't expect anything from them because if you expect something from them. They will just get you to zero at the end of the day. So that is it. Well, Nigeria is a very great nation, irrespective of whatever we feel as a people. You know, we have hardship in the land, agony, pains, and what have you. But if you look at Africa today, Nigeria still has a preeminent place you know, in Africa. Uh, whether it is in terms of leadership, whether it is in terms of economy, I think Nigeria still occupies a very strong leadership position in Africa. And it's a country to be, not just within the region of Africa, I mean, in the entire global affairs. Now, what do you have to say to Nigeria as a nation? And I would say to Nigeria as a nation, or I would say to Nigerians, that we should just keep the hope alive. We may not be where we had expected we should be today, but other nations who have made it in life also have gone through some ups and downs. And so, as Nigerians, we should keep hope alive. I believe someday we'll get there. Some people hold the opinion that by now, Nigeria should be rated alongside the developed nations of the world. I would rate Nigeria very low because nothing has 
nothing has been put on ground for us to benefit. If you ask 100 Nigerians or 10 Nigerians on the road now, only eight, or we say only one, that can even say anything good about Nigeria. Is it the food items in the market? Nothing that is easier for average Nigerian to get it for themselves or the family. So generally, we are suffering, especially the average. Nigeria is divided whether to two. 20% are enjoying, while 80% are suffering. So I would say I'm one of those people that belong to that 80%. So if you are suffering like that, we cannot buy food. We cannot put food on your table. Your family cannot eat. What would I celebrate? I don't have anything to celebrate. As I said earlier, I can only celebrate God that giving us a life to live. If we're to be human beings, I, I believe maybe we'll bow down and continue to bow down for them before they give us life. The energy that we are bringing, if it is government, I don't think it will be easier for us. But God give us free. That's the only person that we can celebrate, the God Almighty. Well, um, rating Nigeria as a nation at 64, um, I would say that uh, Nigeria, to some extent, as much as um, I can analyze, uh, by the grace of God, I am at my early 40. And looking at Nigeria at 64, uh, I would say Nigeria have achieved, but not to our expectations. Not to our expectations. Uh, there are a lot of... Um, a lot of things that still need to put in place, um, especially political-wise. So I would say that Nigeria is very far back when it comes to political structure. Well, Nigeria is our country, so we don't have any other country. Uh, as we lay, lay our bellies, as we lay on it, whatever that is happening in Nigeria has not started from today. It has been in the place. I'm not a politician. But I have to say the reality. If you could remember, in 1999, they gave us a debt relief. What was our gain from that debt relief? Any infrastructure development? Was there any infrastructure development for the eight years of our former president, Opasojo? What have we ever achieved? The last project I can see in Nigeria that has worked is the Todd Milan Bridge from our money. Any other government? Nothing. Uh, in fairness of the admission of uh, Muhammad Buhari, I can just see a second engine bridge, they finish it, and uh, this uh, railway of 18. And it's all by profits, at least the Chinese firm that is financing it. But at least they did not pocket that money. The money worked for something they would. But every other, any other government from there, our refinery has been there for long. Uh, every year they footed the money for turnaround maintenance. I could remember during President Opaso Jordan, it's every year we hear uh, turn around maintenance of the refinery. What, was the, what is the position of the refinery today? If we are talking of Nigeria, we can say we are, we are doing better in uh, some places. But if you say I want to rate them, I myself, we are not doing anything. Because at this time of uh, 64 years, so we have to depend, we don't have to depend on a nation, we have to depend on ourselves. Look at what is happening now. Masses cannot feed. You know how much they are just increasing. They remove the fuel source city after the source city now. Then everything starts increasing. You can never, a man can never feed his family again. Everything is turned up and upside down now in Nigeria. So, so for six, four years that's coming, good. We went good, we want goods to come, but we never know when this thing is happening. I don't know our, our, gov our government, if they look into this level, where we are facing now, we never even know where we are going. Guys, yeah, 64 is coming now. The, may, may God just help them, because may uh, Wahala not come, because so many men, they are dying there by hunger outside there, because of the way they are facing this situation in the country. Uh, written Nigeria as a nation, I, I, I would say, because I don't want to um, say everything is doomed, but there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. So I said, let's, let's do it 50-50. Let's have it. You know, let's give it a chance, another chance. So I'll give Nigeria 50.
Despite the fact that a couple of people have lost hope in Nigeria, many still believe that Nigeria will be great again. Wish them good. You understand? God will give them wisdom for the happen what did they happen for this country. Because we don't know what's their mind. People are people are angry because of what they are facing. Good, we are getting to 64 like this now. But whatever they are going to face by after this con I wish them good. May God good give them good reason how this country is going to be good, how everything is going to be there okay for us. Because people, some people are there, they are dying. People, ah, a lot of things is happening for this country, but I never know. But let's come if they have any option, any opinion for what is happening for this country. Yes. Well, I congratulate Nigeria. So we should expect, we pray for our leader to have God's uh, heart so that they can put masses in their heart. So in whatever program they are doing, they should put masses. They think of our, don't, they should not think of themselves because they are enjoying. The masses are not enjoying. Every masses are suffering. So they should put us in mind. We need a country that will come to that level where education will be meaningful. And again, it's not where we are talking that uh, education starts, but you know, uh, you go to university at the age of 18. You know, whereas some of these guys will go to, you know, their children will go to school at the age of 12. I get what I mean. We have to balance it. There must be equity and fair play in this, you know, in a country. And nobody is the owner of the country. We are the owners of this country. All of us must come to understand it. And again, we must have industrial, I mean, a radical industrialization in this country. We, we mustn't, you know, go and support China. Because the moment we, you know, give our monies to China, you know, we are downplaying our economic development. We need to encourage people, like there are, you know, people that have started their, you know, the industrial revolution, like uh, Innocin, Innocin Motors. We have other people. We have people in agriculture. We need to support them. The central bank need to support them. The industrial, you know, bank of industry need to support them and other activities. You know, the government has to get money from overseas and support them. Not, you know, using money, you know, to do pilotives. No. We need to support our young people, our young industries, because that is what happened in America. America, uh, uh, you know, at 64, you know, really, you know, you know, thrived. I get it, me. They thrived. And we need to thrive with radical policies. And the government supposed not to look at anybody. They are supposed not be, you know, godfatherism in this country. We need to pursue, you know, something, you know, the development of this country meticulously. Are you getting me? And again, look at private universities. If, at, you know, if Nigeria wants to survive as a nation, you know, private universities should not come up, you know, to charge or overburden the people. You know, the people or the, 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 the children of the children cannot go to university of the private schools. Are you getting me? You know, where you have somebody earning 70,000, let me use that word, after all, the 70,000 has not come in operation. But when it comes to operation, somebody's earning 70,000, do you think a family of four can, you know, send their children to private schools? No, the government has to look into it. That, you know, there must be a radical approach to all these things so that we become the real country we want to, you know, be. And again, we are talking about uh, agriculture. You know, there is, you know, a total, you know, um, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, radicalism in agriculture in other countries of the world. You know, the government sponsor agriculture. The government also buy agricultural produce in order to help the Nigerian people. And again, when you come to industrialization, how come that we buy matches from abroad? What I really expect us to do for now, I will expect our, our, our advice, our government people, that is our so-called governor, president, councillor, whoever um, position, there should, there should be... They should, they should walk hand to hand, you understand, and tell each other truth. They know the truth. They know what people are fixing. What I'm telling you, they know about it. Because they are also living in this country. It's not maybe they are governing this country while they are living in another country. They are here. They know the amount, of their, the amount they are selling it before, amount they are selling it before now. Then apart from this, before, we still have some other challenges. Nepal, the tariff has increased. SS. So they should listen to people. And because we vote them in for them to help us. Not for them, mean for them to give us difficult of life living. So I think they should just work together and help us. Well, Nigeria as a nation, let me take from Bible. The Bible say, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. So if Nigeria can embrace every form of righteousness 
to follow suit according to the Constitution, embrace equity, fairness, and justice, it will be a great nation. Example of most of the great nations we know today, some of them may not be so much religious, but they have embraced the right way of doing things, and God has helped them to become very great nation. Nigeria, without a doubt, has major significant evidence that it's a great nation. But we have to really come together, put our heads together, and forge the way forward for the next generation. So it's about time for Nigeria to stop living childish and embrace leadership, live like elders, amen? Because without a doubt, anyone that is 63 or four years old is already an elder. So at this point, all we need is result. No more excuses, just manifestation of greatness. And I believe with the right people in place, with the right determination, we should be able to actualize all of those. Nigeria is still walking the journey of a thousand miles. Keep hopes alive. The eagle will fly again. God bless Nigeria. For more informative and educative episodes, follow us across all our social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until I come your way again, keep watching Street Smart on Union Television.